This programme was made with support from the National Lottery Heritage Fund. On the Heritage Channel tonight is our future grounded in the past, a historic monument is given a new lease of life and the man who made Grimsby. Welcome to the Heritage Channel, where we explore the fascinating history of North East Lincolnshire in a monthly roundup of news, views and local stories. At Heritage Lincolnshire, the Young Archaeologist Club Summer Term continues on the 3rd of June, exploring the aviation heritage of Lincolnshire by looking at resources from Cranwell Aviation Heritage Museum. The aviation theme continues on the 9th of June with the first of a two-part talk on the history of the Red Arrows. And Skegness, the Victorian new town, explores how the railways transformed the co-port of Skegness into the town we know today. Full details from Heritage Lincolnshire website. More about the transformative power of railways later in the programme, but first, our future starts here a programme of cultural events and activities that explore the issues of our time, considering Grimsby's place in the world today and how this is influenced by our rich cultural heritage. Becky Darnell from The Culture House is here to tell us more. The Culture House was founded by Charlotte Bowen in 2010. For a long time it was solely Charlotte on a one woman mission you could say to bring much needed culture to the area. Um, North East Lincolnshire is really underserved when it comes to culture. So as a place based organisation a lot of what we do is about celebrating local and whether that be you know people, um, art, culture and certainly heritage. So the Culture House obviously has been growing and evolving since 2010. From April we have been awarded a National Portfolio status from Arts Council England so we're the only MPO within the area so it's a great um, honour and responsibility but what that means is that Arts Council England have invested in the Culture House for three years um, for us to deliver on our place-based strategies, um, support local talent and also support the local creative sector. For me, it's important if you're looking at the future, you know, it's important to understand the past. Through our programme, Our Future Starts Here, um, that is about highlighting Grimsby's place in the world now as a world leading green renewables hub. But obviously, you know, at, at one stage we had world leading fishing heritage and a lot of that infrastructure and mindset has ca carried over to enable us to be, you know, innovators and, and be where we are now. So it's really important to be able to tell that story. We're able to do it through the power of arts and culture, so it makes it accessible and engaging to people. The iconic Grimm and Havelock statue, sculptured by celebrated artist Douglas Wayne Hobson, once stood proudly by the Grimsby Institute on Nuns Corner. A local organisation is planning to restore it in time for its 50th birthday, thanks to help from the National Lottery Heritage Fund. I caught up with project leader Jill Wilson from the Equality Practice to find out more. The statue stood there for probably about 30 years, from the 70s to the 90s. But it was gifted to the art students of the Grimsby College, as it was known then. And then it started to come under uh, attack from vandals. So after a while of trying to address the vandalism, it was then just taken down. And for many years, it laid all alone. And people started to say, where's, where's the statue? Well, let's, let's bring it back because it's a, it's a brilliant icon of Grimsby and we had very few statues at the time. So people started to talk about it and we 
got involved in the conversations. But over the years, it's been in disrepair. It's been taken in by good, good intended people who have tried to repair it and have actually made it more vulnerable. So what's happening now is the statue will be scanned to see exactly what it is. There is an idea about the fact that it might be set into a mould. We're going to ask the public, do they want to see it repaired or do they want to see it re-erected in its state as it is now? So the project is not just ours, it's the, it's the people's project. They're going to be able to come to the Turntable Gallery, which starts on the 20th of May, and they can go in, see the statue, and there's all sorts of paraphernalia for people to fill in and talk about the statue and, and actually give their opinions. don't know if it's a story, but it is the greatest legend of Grimsby to hear that a guy called Grim, a Danish fisherman, a Danish fish merchant, and when he needed to be a warrior, saved a Danish prince, a small boy, Prince Havelock, and brought him over the seas with his family, landed on the shores, the south shores of the Humber, and set up home and then grew, the town grew from there because he brought his entrepreneurial skills. What a story to tell. I mean, am I a descendant of Grimm and Havelock? Are you a descendant? Or maybe we're walking in the footsteps of, of great migration. It's a story that, you know, unites those of us that have come here and those of us that were born here. No day is the same. Every day is very different, always different challenges to me and learning lots along the way. Sometimes you feel as though every day is the same, but it's not. Every day is a different challenge. One minute they, they don't know who you are and just that little smile when they recognise you or they recognise a song, it oh, just brings tears to your eyes, you know. And to know that at the end of the day you have helped them to live the day as, as best they can. Events surrounding the Grim Fest, the exciting Viking festival held in September last year, are continuing on the run-up to this year's festival, with a free Vico drumming workshop inspired by the Viking and Nordic rhythms delivered by the fantastic Humber Tycho on Saturday the 17th of June at Centre 4. Book now through Eventbrite. In the late 18th century, successful entrepreneur Edward Watkins saw the potential to turn the port of Grimsby into the biggest fishing port in the world and Cleethorpes into a major holiday resort by bringing railway to this coastal community. Often referred to as Mr Grimsby, we explore the life and work of this ambitious Victorian businessman with the help of Jeff Scargill, president of the Edward Watkins Society. Sir Edward William Watkin. He was one of the best known people in Victorian Britain and strangely forgotten. Strangely because of the amazing things that he did and also the amazing things that he failed to do. The date of his birth and the date of his death coincided with Queen Victoria, 1819 to 1901. He was an MP for 40 years. He built the last main railway line from Manchester down to a new station called Marylebone in London. And the Grimsby and Cleethorpes lines are part of, were part of that. It was called the Great Central Railway. He was actually director or chairman of 30 railway companies. His great project that failed was to have a railway from Manchester to Paris. And part of that was to join the three companies that he was chairman of. All that was missing was a channel tunnel. And in 1880, he started to dig it. And he got two miles and the government panicked. They thought the French 
would invade, which was ludicrous really. You can't invade a country through a hole in the ground, but they, they stopped him. So that was his first major failure. He developed the railway for Grimsby and Cleethorpes. The railway station at Grimsby Town was already there, but he developed it incredibly, particularly, obviously, the docks. Uh, he drained West Marsh and built the Union Dock and had it opened in 1879 by the Prince and Princess of Wales. He saw the potential of Grimsby and he laid the foundations of Grimsby becoming what it became in the 20th century, as you know, the largest fishing port in the whole world. So it isn't an exaggeration to say that he really created modern Grimsby. His work in Cleethorpes was even more dramatic. It was being eroded by the North Sea. And there are some frightening pictures of uh, the erosion of the cliffs. He spent the equivalent of 12 million pounds on creating a sea wall to defend Cleethorpes. Cleethorpes would have fallen in the sea. Behind the wall, he developed the promenade. He paid for a pier. And the most dramatic statement that he made was he extended the railway from Grimsby to Cleethorpes. The railway station at Cleethorpes isn't in the middle of Cleethorpes, it's on the sands. And he was making a statement that it was going to be a holiday resort. And that's what it became. Cleethorpes became phenomenally popular and in one Saturday afternoon there were 30,000 people arrived on a Saturday to Cleethorpes and they all came on Edward Watkins' train so he wasn't just a pretty face. He did other great things. One amazing success, one amazing failure. He decided to build an Eiffel Tower in London. He only had one condition, it had to be the biggest in the world. He bought an enormous park, nine miles from the centre of London. And uh, the money ran out, it had to be dismantled. But the park continued to exist, and it's now the site of Wembley Stadium. The other amazing success that he had was in Canada. You'd think I was going over the top when I said he created Canada. So I'll modify it and say he helped to create Canada. Because Canada in the 1850s, 60s, was six British provinces, all of them fiercely independent all of them with their own Prime Minister, and the British government wanted to see them unite, partially by them coming together into a single country, partially by building a railway that would unite the provinces. And Watkin was instrumentally helped directly the colonial secretary. He developed one railway into the biggest railway in the world, but that became the basis of the railway that united Canada, the Canadian Pacific, and he was knighted by the British government for his work. So he, he was a quite amazing man, but here in our locality, here in Grimsby and Cleethorpes, are two real legacies of his work. The amazing thing is that Nobody's heard of him. Well, the Watkins Society is trying to help remedy that. We're delighted to find that we just happen to have come along at a time where we can assist what is already happening in Grimsby and Cleethorpe. 
there's a feeling that things are beginning to happen around here. And we're able to promote, through Edward Watkin, some pride in the history of the town. Well, that's all from the Heritage Channel tonight. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or Facebook group to keep up to date with all the latest Heritage news. From Alex, Elise, Gemma, Hugh, John, Kirsty, and all the team at the Heritage Channel, thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next month for more Heritage news, views and local stories. The programmes on the Heritage Channel are made with support from the National Lottery Heritage Fund.